Good morning, everybody. Victor here. Scott Rose. What's happening? So you guys might recognize my buddy Scott right here. Um, he is a guide in South Florida, Peacock Adventures. Wrapping the merch. So Scott is a good buddy of mine. I actually, we went on a really epic trip to Panama earlier this year, and he asked me, Vic, you've never done a bofin or mudfish catch and cook. That is today's mission. Half the world thinks they're trash fish. Good old Southern boys. I've seen a bunch of YouTube videos of people frying them up. They love them. I'm here. You guys know me. I'm all, I'm all about dispelling the whole trash fish. I put it in quotes because I don't think there's such thing as trash fish, but we're out here in the beautiful Everglades. Don't, don't let Vic undersell how much he wants to catch a bofin. <laughs> this is not just like, Hey Vic, let's go catch a boat. And it's like, Scott, when are we catching a boat? Scott, when are we catching a boat? And well, today's the day. Hopefully we'll get him. I'm fired up. I'm like a little kid in a candy store. Let's you wanna, go. You wanna see a good start to the day too? First rod I just pulled out. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> That's good. That's always how I like to start. First fish of the day. Peacock on top water. The way everyone wants to catch them. That's the way I want to catch them. Oh, well, you still got a chance. Huh? Yeah, very dark fish out here. That tannic water in the glades really turns them dark. Okay, look in front of you. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. Behind us. Oh my gosh. There's like four right there. We got like 10 around us right yeah, now. Yeah, you're not kidding. You guys, there's a gator, a little gator right there. Four of them in the middle of the canal. If you don't book a trip with Scott for the fish, you at least go on a gator tour. Yeah, for one peacock a day. Oh, a largemouth. The very rare Florida Everglades nice. largemouth. You said you've been guiding for how many years? Uh, I'm in eight, year eight right now. And how many of these would you catch back in the day? So back in the day, you used to run a lot of largemouth charters, a ton. Like when we came to the glades, it was not for peacocks, it was for bass. Probably 100, 150 fish. Because of the success of the peacocks, but I think more more so the, the invasion of the Oscars and the Mayans, catching a largemouth in the Everglades <laughs> is an unusual circumstance now. It's just like, it's kind of sucks to say, but fish. So, yeah. Oh, that's the one. No. <laughs> Okay, but now There's at least one. I see what it looks like now. Such hard mouths. So a lot of them will just start rolling like he did and okay. figure out a way to get off. So did you sight cast that one or yeah, was that just blind? Okay. Just twitching and didn't get a great hook that on. Oh. Yeah. That's one. That's one. I knew you'd get it done. Let's I knew you'd get it done. Oh, nice spot. job. Thanks, dude. One down. All right, guys. We got our first bowfin, also known as mudfish. There's like... 20 different names for these things depending on what party of the country you're in but check this out kind of like very similar to our snakehead although the snakehead they have this big fin here and then they've got the same thing on the bottom where there's the bow fin normal peck fin normal anal fin but very similar fish rock Hard, solid huh? rock solid head the anatomy is a lot like a snake and if you look down there big crushers mm -hmm. prehistoric fish been around for a long time Yeah, you really got to lay into him. You guys saw, I mean, Scott him gave him the wood. The other thing was, did you see how long I waited? Yes. Tried to make sure exactly where he was, so I hit him as hard as I possibly could. Once they got it, they're, they're holding on to it. What do you think, Vic? Try and get yourself one now? Yes, I need to get one. I'm, I'm, I am very excited. You guys can relate as a fisherman. It's, it doesn't matter what you're catching. Your first of anything is always special. And it's always cool. And I've never caught one. They, they're badass looking fish. So we're going to stick this guy in the live well because from what I've heard and read on the internet, these are one fish you actually want to fillet without putting them on ice because the meat gets super mushy real fast. So we're gonna keep them alive until the very end of the day. I think this might be a bass. We'll find out. No, an Oscar, Ooh, as an soon Oscar. as it hit bottom. Okay, something we need to explain with this guy. Are you gonna bonk him? 
Uh, yeah, we or probably should. The Oscars are bad. Really, really. The easiest way to explain the Oscars to a lot of saltwater guys watching your channel is they're our equivalent of a lionfish. Super bad. They spread out here like crazy. Every year I see more and more and less of everything else. This is a tiger Oscar. I recently posted a video with my buddy Johnny where we went out, probably caught a hundred of these things. A lot of you guys commented, why are you releasing an invasive species? I personally don't like to kill things unless I'm gonna eat them. It's your own personal choice. But that guy will be in the water for probably 30 minutes before an osprey or a gator eats him. Never seen another one of my Oscars floating the next day, so. Out here, everything gets eaten. Yep. One less predator that the native stuff has to deal with. There's a critic in every crowd, and I know I got a ton of hay comments saying, why did you guys release so many Oscars? But listen to this, riddle me this. If I had sat at home and not went out and fished with Johnny and Ryan and not killed any Oscars, then there would be 30 more Oscars in the Everglades than there was before we went out. So even if we caught and released them, it's still better than sitting behind a computer screen and typing about it. What was going on there? Yeah. Come on. Be it, be it, be it. Oh, oh that boys. was one. All right, at least I know exactly what oh. I'm looking for now. Oh. So close. They're hard to keep hooked, Yeah, dude. especially when they're swimming towards you. You just gotta just, just crank. Yep. This crazy looking thing right here looks like a crawfish, right? You're just dragging it through the mud and these mudfish, bofin, are laying on bottom you're dragging this past its face and sometimes they thump it sometimes you just feel your line getting tight like you're almost like you're stuck you're real tight and you stick them as hard as you can because as scott demonstrated earlier they got a super hard mouth you got to penetrate through but that fish just started swimming towards me shook his head shook the hook before we move on a big thank you to today's video sponsor Policy genius. Something you guys might not know about me is I love the topic of finance. 401ks, Roth IRAs, money, business. I love learning about and investing for the future. I turned 30 this past year and the older I get, the more I think about my finances and my future family, but life insurance is something I never really thought about until now. And this is where Policy Genius comes in. Policy Genius is an online insurance marketplace where you can compare life insurance quotes and buy a policy all in one place. Your one-stop shop to find the insurance you need at the right price. Click the link in the description box below or head to policygenius.com slash Outdoors to answer a few questions. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The team of licensed experts at Policy Genius are on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options and make decisions with confidence. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. Whether you're just starting to shop or have questions about your act policy. They're your independent advocates offering unbiased advice. I am a complete nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff and actually very thankful Policy Genius reached out. I think it's a very important topic to discuss with your family. So if you guys are interested, check out Policy Genius in the description box below. Let's get back to the video. Oh, here we go. Yes. Yes. Big one. Oh, Do we need the net for this one. Yeah. Oh my God. Dude, it's huge. huge. Flip no, dude, you got to get this one in the boat. Where is he? Jeez, no, no, no. So close. He was like right in the net. <gasps> dude, that was, okay, that was like, yes. Oh. That's the fourth one. We've lost three. I think this stretch of canal is getting good. Yeah, they're here. The journey is just as important as the destination. That's exactly right. And we do have one in the well. Yes. Jeez. Oh yeah, I just can't get one. one to the boat. I can't get one to the boat. That's a little one. Very scaly. Hard, hard scales. So these are the whiskers I was telling you about. They oh use yeah, these. they do, don't they? I believe they use these to pick up vibration in the water. Hmm. And hard to uh, see, but nasty little teeth. And they've got really strong bite force, so you don't want to get caught in there. Oh. I don't know. Look at that line. So mm -hmm. tight. Yes, it is. Another little it's one. Baby one. Damn, you saw how long That's, he held that? Yeah, you got it. I guess you really got to stick every single yeah. one you think that is one, right? Look, just, dude, look at the line. See, I. Both, Both in. in. Dude, I need to get my stuff together. 
Damn. I just got eight right here underneath the boat. Get it. <laughs> I'm messing you up, dude. Yeah, you are. Three and a half pounder, maybe? Yeah. Giant boatman right here, dude. Get him. He's on it. Oh, trap right there. Trap right there. There. Let it sink. And twitch it as you drop. Damn. All of a sudden, they're on this side, good. Mm -hmm. You want to run all these edges here? Oh, oh, Hit he's it. right there. Hit it. That's him. In. <laughs> Dude, this is going to be such a nice video. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, that was the one that you saw probably, yeah, isn't it? Probably. I don't know. Dude, he actually looks a little smaller. Oh, look at the gator coming in hot thinking he's going to get a meal. Yep. Dude, he's charging us. Yep. He'll listen to the sound. Wow. Yep. We're oh, not, yeah. He's picking up speed. Look at how much he's bleeding the, the bowfin. Okay, so I just caught this bowfin and look at this gator thinking he's going to get a free meal. Oh, my gosh. Dude, Scott, you're not getting that close. Yeah, they do. Like, wild. there's another one right there. Yeah. You guys know I'm a salty guy at heart, but this is fun. I don't do much freshwater fishing. I don't do much Everglades fishing, but this is just serene and beautiful. And you're, there's so many birds and Scott's like, look at this bird, look at that bird. So much wildlife, alligator gar, bass, peacocks, Oscars, bowfin. These are one hard hitting, aggressive, fun fish. And they'll actually challenge you. I mean, there's definitely skill level to it involved because Scott's got five, Four or five under his belt, and that was the first one I put in the boat. You're surrounded by gators. I've seen more gators today than I probably have on any fishing trip I've ever done in Florida or any sightseeing trip I've ever done in Florida. So if you guys want to book a trip, hit up my boy Scott. Sounds good. Peacock, Peacock. Adventures. Yes, sir. And catch some of these guys. <laughs> if you're someone who gets seasick, you're not getting seasick out here. I'll tell you that. It is flat calm. 24-7, 365 days a year. Oh, I might have one right here. Get it. Oh. oh my gosh, this is Big a good one. fish. Big one. Keep Whatever this really is, is tight, good. Dude. Big one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. fine. I, I could have sworn it was pulling back, but I think it was just us moving towards it. You know what? Just to keep it honest with you guys, I'll leave this in the video. Big gator right in front of us. That's a nine footer, isn't it, yeah, Scott? Yeah, for sure. So I just caught this one. GoPro was not recording, of course. We saw like an eight pounder. The one that Scott lost earlier in the day, one came right up, followed our baits right next to the boat, and I missed the hook set. But there's like our seventh or eighth one of the day. Whoa. That's a bite. That's oh, a peacock, that isn't like it? Peacock. That's not fighting like an Oscar, that's for sure. I don't think it's an Oscar. Nope. 10 pound bowfin. I would be more happy with a 10 pound bowfin right now than anything. Oh, no doubt. It's a good fish. It's a nice peacock. Man. It's a peacock. Yep. Do these fish pull hard? They throw down. They, they, they definitely do. Nice. All right, so this is what Scott is normally known for. Today was a mudfish mission, but if you guys want to come out here and catch these, We've been here for five minutes at this spot, already put a stud in the boat. And this is a male, right? Yeah. So you can tell it's got that signature hump right there. The prettiest pattern, colors, the morphology, they fight hard, they're super aggressive. I mean, just look at all the different colors in his tail right there. You got blue, red, orange, yellow, green. Such an epic animal. So you guys see, I'm working this bank right here. Scott's still got his top water on, but all these little rock cre crevices and stuff, these fish will make their beds, so male and female will make their beds up there, protect their fry, but most of the most of the fish, 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water, which is the edges. In my day too. Oh, Ooh, something flashed. Jaguar, dude. Oh, oh Jaguar. Get him in. How did you spot that so quickly? Nice. Have you caught one? No, before? my first oh, ever. Heck awesome. yeah, thank you. So check this out. First ever Jaguar Cichlid, Jaguar Guapote. Uh, the last time I fished with Johnny and Ryan, Ryan actually caught one. And these are another fish that were introduced into the canals because of the aquarium trade. So they got too big for people's tanks, people let them go, and they started to flourish. Scott says that it's still pretty rare to catch them, but who knows, in 10 years, they might be the new Oscar in town, you know? When they come to eat, look at how the way the mouth shoots out. Boom. Yeah. Very cool. 
He smoked the bucktail jig too. Very aggressive, these guys. Very cool. There. Ooh, there he is. Cool. Yeah. Dude, they are so aggressive. They don't want it slow. They want no, it they fast want it and hard. Keep back on speed. Yep. Oh, well. Oscar? No. Mine. Uh, A lot of mines over here. Mine. Another very colorful, pretty fish. See these black yep. bristle fins, spawning fish. A male, female? What does that mean? Like male, female, oh, and a male oh, over there. Okay. Dude, look right here. Holy smokes. Look at this guy coming to that. say hi. Big gator. No fear with these things. What about your hot Yeah, he will, won't he? Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's definitely been fed by a human before, I'd say. Oh yeah. Wow, he's really not afraid, is he? Too much. Oh, big fish. Big peacock, right? Yeah. Netter? Yeah. I thought he was much bigger. Nice fish, though. Mm -hmm. Blue. Gorgeous. Yep, he's lots been eating shrimp. <laughs> been eating lots of shrimp. Oh, what is that? Not. Dude, you got a play though, I think. No. Do you? Yeah, you do. Are you Dude, he <laughs> ate that. Tell me he did not eat that. I think you just nagged him in the mouth. Are you? These aren't poisonous or anything, no. right? First one? First, yeah, I can honestly say first Playco. That's hilarious. You want to talk about armor-plated fish? Are these invasive too? Oh yeah. Really? These are the ones that you would see on a fish tank wall oh. all over. Listen, come on. He's got some crazy vibrations going on. Cool looking oh. little fish. Good deep bass. Bite's gotten good all of a sudden. But pretty again. Gator coming in hot. Go! Yeah, you see the net, you know what's up. Everyone says don't ice the mudfish, otherwise the meat gets soft, which is really counterintuitive to what you would think because every fish you generally want to ice. But I think these guys deteriorate super fast, so we just bonked him. His nerves are moving a little bit, but he's dead for the most part. They have very thick scales. Um, not as aggressive as something like a gar, but definitely on like a, a heavier snapper side. So we're going to go right here. Oh, cooler is kind of flopping all over the place. So the one thing, the chief complaint that everyone says with these fish is that they are mushy. It's also a very weird form. Okay, I got I gotta put this cooler down. This is not working out for us. Went right through the, the backbone's pretty soft too. Yeah. Like. It's almost like there's no backbone. Hey, this was a female. Look, she's got rope. Makes them both in caviar. Okay, well there is one fillet of your mudfish. It's really not that soft. Really not that soft. It seemingly works. Yeah, that actually better. works much better. Not horrible. Okay, I'll tell you right now that it skins much nicer than it fillets. It looks much better once you rinse it off. I gotta fillet one more because that fillet didn't do justice. But they don't look bad. It reminds me a lot of like catfish. I know it's gonna be soft once we cook it, but right now it's pretty dang firm. And that's everyone's chief complaint that is that it's too soft in texture. This is gonna be my second mudfish fillet. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the first one did not look too pretty. These are extremely slimy and somewhat mushy. And uh, I'm not really at a fillet table right here. They got super thick scales, as you guys see right there. But I'm gonna thank you, Scott, with the assist. They do have a pretty big rib cage, and it extends very far. It's right, it's just like a snake head rib cage. Yeah. The anatomy of those two fish is just crazy how similar they are. Okay, there we go. That fillet got justice. They're very bloody fish too. Yeah. But that time we didn't leave anything on there. I've never seen a fish with multicolor roe. Look at that. 
That is all aggro. That is all little baby mudfish. Let's go rinse these puppies off. I don't know how I'm gonna approach this in the kitchen. I wanna see what the meat does when we actually get it inside, put it in the fridge, see if it softens up a little bit. Every protein, every animal, every living thing has a purpose, has a role, and can be made into something delicious. Our ancestors would probably be rolling in their graves if we ever called anything a trash fish, because I guarantee you, at one point or another, somebody's life depended on eating fish like mudfish and gar and, and gators and all these other things that people might think is creepy. There was no Publix back in the day. You couldn't go and get your nice little rotisserie chicken. You had to go out into the wild, catch stuff like this, and they didn't have any seasonings. They opened, did it over an open fire, and guess what? They got us to where we are today. So, shout out to them. I have come to realize one thing about mudfish and that they do not like cold. So this is the next day and check this out. Look at how mushy it got. Yesterday it was nice and firm. The only thing I've done, filleted it straight to the fridge when I got home last night and it was firm this morning after being in the fridge all night. No bueno. They, it, it's just a fish that deteriorates really fast. So we're gonna make fish cakes. And before anyone says, Vic, you're gonna mask the flavor of the fish, people say that when you do stuff like this, when you make a fish cake or something, you're masking the flavor. I challenge you, get yourself a piece of spoiled chicken breast, spoiled steak, spoiled fish, whatever it is, something that inherently doesn't taste good or is bad, mash it up into a bunch of little pieces, make it into a fish cake or fritter or fry or whatever you say is gonna mask it, and I promise you, it's not gonna taste good. It's not the fish's fault, it's mushy. That's the whole thing with a so-called trash fish, is you can't treat it as every other fish. You're not gonna go to a five-star restaurant and find mudfish on the menu because people want a nice filet, something firm, with a little bit of flake. It's not as presentable. Is it the fish's fault? Absolutely not. We, as chefs and we as anglers, have to get creative and treat the fish with respect. And that's all there is to it. So we're gonna make fish cakes. Because it's a mushy fish, I'm gonna treat it for what it is. It's gonna be perfect for a fish cake. A firm fish wouldn't be perfect for a fish cake because it's gonna be too tough. So, mudfish fish cakes. In here I got an egg, scallion, celery for a little bit of crunch because this is so mushy. So you don't want too much spongy flavor. You want a little bite in that fish cake. We're just gonna mix this all together. We're gonna season it with some Old Bay. I'm also going to do a little bit of buttermilk. It's going to give it a good acidity and, and fat content. As well as some Italian breadcrumbs. I mean, just sitting here and playing around with the mudfish, it doesn't smell. There's nothing foul about it. It's just fish. That's all there is to it. Okay, so now we're just going to make little patties. And you definitely want to work with this cold, otherwise, I mean, it's already sticking, but if you're not gonna work with the cold, it's gonna stick even more. So this stuff is super sticky, right? So I'm gonna go into a little bit more panko, not panko, I'm gonna go into a little bit more Italian breadcrumb, kind of coat all sides. And when you really consider it, this fish cake is 75% fish. So it's not like there's a ton of stuff in there, you know, hiding the mud fish. Look at that. Mudfish patty going down nonstick pan in some vegetable oil. So they're not gonna be deep fried, you know. We're gonna have to do a little flip. You could kick the fish before if you wanted to, but I didn't find it necessary because I feel like it's gonna cook plenty fine in here. All right. Okay, ready for the flip? Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, look at that. Mudfish cutlets. Every Italian grandma would be very proud right now. We got three left. To go with our mudfish cakes, we got a little cauliflower rice, some yellow peppers, celery, some caramelized onions, garlic, and I think that's about it in there. Let's go, oh, and kohlrabi. Brooke made a fish head soup and jaw mountain video, and we had some leftover kohlrabi. Oh yeah, crispy fish cake. Okay, and then since fried anything is kind of heavy, we got a little mango, pepper, 
cucumber, I don't know if you want to call it a salad or salsa, just toss it in some lime juice and some cilantro. We got a lot of brown going on. It's mud, it's mud themed. Yes. Fridge, so this is a little, is this from your video? Sweet chili mayo? Bang bang sauce. Bang bang sauce. Do we dare put it on top of the fish cakes or do we just? We dare. Mm, no, we go right next to them. How about just like this? Just, oh, look at that. That's the way you do <laughs> As you guys see, we got Scott at the table. What's happening, guys? All right, let's dig in. Let's, let's try see. it. You first. Let's see. Me first? You yeah, first. You okay. never get to go first. No, Raw, exactly. uncut opinion. Mudfish, crunchy on the outside, very... Oh, it's actually not. You want me to get the handy closer? Wow. I'm very, yeah, get it closer. It's, I'm very pleasantly surprised. The reason I'm pleasantly surprised is because I've made a lot of fish cakes back in the day. Clown knife fish, lady fish, um, other fish, blue fish, all soft fleshed fish. This is not mushy, not anything what I would expect. When you guys look at this, it's, um, it actually held together very well. It's got a bite to it, look. I would go as far to say that this is the best fish cake I ever had. Wow. I'm not wow. kidding. The best fish cake I ever had. If I were to pick a fish to make fish cakes with, it would be mudfish, hands down. You asked me the other day, because Scott, Scott's always interested in like, all the different fish we've eaten. He said, out of all the fish that you've eaten, which trash fish, so-called trash fish, has like surprised you the most? And it took me a while to think about it, but it was Bermuda chub, remember? Yeah. Mudfish, new, man. New answer. Mudfish, maybe not new answer, but mudfish fish cakes are a thing. It's just a crazy transformation because it was so firm, really mushy, yeah. now firm again. I, I would say it's like, it almost is, a firm fish in yeah. a fish cake, it's, it's bizarre. I'm not kidding. After looking at what it looks like, would never have seen that coming. It's good, it tastes great. And you have actually eaten my I have before. tried it. I tried it once. I have pretty much every single fish that I catch, I've tried at least once. And the taste, I, I was saying to Vic, taste is good, but I couldn't get behind the texture. I tried to just pan fry it as a simple filet and the texture just fell apart when, when I bit it. I always like to try to go into things with a positive attitude, but at the same time, always like kind of um, having like an idea of what I think it's gonna taste like. And I thought this was gonna taste kind of money. I've heard some rumors about it tasting money. It does not have a money taste to it whatsoever. Like Victor said, these may be the best fish cakes we've had. It's all about learning how to cook a fish properly. It's not a trash fish. This is how you should cook it. If you cooked it a different way, then maybe you would think it was a trash fish. But we've done ladyfish um, fish cakes and we've done clown knife fish fish cakes. I agree with Victor. These ones are the best ones. Those ones were like really, really spongy. You yes. remember that? Very, exactly. That's the perfect word to describe it. They were very spongy. This is not spongy. This is really good. Not that spongy is bad or whatever, but this is really good. So I'm really pleased. Definitely not a trash fish whatsoever. So good job. Or no, no, like a chicken nugget. It's a, it's, it doesn't make any sense. It no. does taste like a pretty chicken nugget. Yes. Now that you say that, it does. It tastes like a McDonald's chicken yes. nugget, like a McNut, like the texture. And which think is, of that texture and when you look at it, when it was, when you're about to cook it, it just makes no, no sense at sense. all. Big shout out to Scott for making it happen. Ton of species. If you guys want a day like that, check out Captain Scott. Peacock Adventures linked in the description box below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.